Hi, my name is Dan. I was asked to give a video a review of all of our experiences with Rebel Revolt, the game from Lock, Paper, Scissors. Uh, I want to let everybody know we had a lot of fun. Uh, I have some interesting ideas about how you might play it and some obstacles we came across that I was going to point out now. Um, first and foremost, before I sat down in front of the group, um, we printed out the game just using our home printer. and. I played the game all the way through before I put it in front of a group of Boy Scouts. Uh, my entire goal of playing the game was to occupy approximately 50 people, leaders uh, and scouts, before a parade uh, when we had about an hour and a half to kill while we were getting set up. So that was my framework for what I wanted to do. My uh, target audience was boys 11 to 17 and the leaders that instruct them. So, I went through all of the puzzles of the game, printing them out on the printer, and then uh, made some modifications, which is one of the things I like about this game. Uh, Lock, Paper, Scissors does give you all of the artwork and that kind of thing, so if you feel like you're, for your particular game group you need to make some modifications to the game, you can. You can change any of the artwork, any of the cards, any of the puzzles, any way that better suits your needs and your messages. So, uh, with that in mind, let me show you what I did to modify the game a little bit. Um, looking here at the board, uh, since we were going to be outside of the parade field, I was not going to have internet access and I was trying to keep the scouts from using their phones. So, all of the materials of the game I printed out as a sheet. Uh, the, the dialogues to be read, what the various puzzles were, uh, and we went through each puzzle one at a time. And then, I also had all of the clues printed out and I had the paper folded so you could only see one clue at a time as you worked your way through the puzzle. That way electronics were not required. Uh, I, as a parent and a scout leader, struggle all of the time to keep kids away from electronics. So, I took this game to a strictly offline mode. It's up to you on how you want to do it. Um, being able to download and check your answers is fine, but I ran the game as a game master. So, having already played the game, I had some experiences with it. And then, the other things that I did is I set up uh, a score sheet for each of the teams. I had the various team members, and I kept track of what order yeah, each group finished each of the four challenges. I set it up so that first place scored you 40 points, eighth place scored you five points, and then if you required a hint, it was a deduction of five points. Uh, and then uh, at the end of the puzzle, not to try to spoil anything for anybody, but at the minefield at the end, um, there was a time limit thing to determine who got through the minefield the fastest, and then there was a deduction for the number of mines that you hit. Um, in terms of game preparation, uh, after I had already played through the game and understood how we were going to play the game, I determined which pictures we were going to need to print, and I actually printed them up as nice glossy photos at my local Walgreens. found an online promo code, and it only cost me about five cents a piece to get these printed up nice and glossy and nice and consistent. Um, one of the puzzles involves uh, a circuit board uh, that looks like this in the original printout. Uh, it was only, well, here it is right here. This was the original printout of this map. I am a man 50 years old. Uh, I had great difficulty reading this circuit board design when we put it together like this. So instead of having everybody struggle to try to understand that, I got access to a large format printer and I printed this circuit board out big so that it was much more easily followed and there was a whole lot less frustration from all of the players. Uh, if you don't have access to a large format printer, or you're using it digitally, obviously you can blow up the image online, but our experience has led to that. And then the only other significant modification we made to the game is the minefield at the end. Uh, instead of using cards that had little pictures of mines on them, I wanted to add a little more realism to our game and perhaps add a little bit of fear for our scouts, so I incorporated a mousetrap. Uh, the boys had a sufficient level of anxiety when they were blindfolded and being instructed to walk through a whole field of mousetraps. Uh, I actually felt like that was a great team building experience because they had to trust the person who was leading the mission to guide them through without stepping on a mousetrap. So, uh, anyway, uh, I would tell you the game is fun. I would tell you that uh, if you have a group of people, a single group, this is a fun game. Or I ran the game with uh, eight teams of people. Everybody seemed like they had a good time. Everybody's levels were different, which is why I was grateful I had played through the game ahead of time and had all of the answers to the puzzles there. I tried to divvy up my teams equally, uh, having both adults and scouts on teams, and I tried to make sure that everybody had the opportunity to complete the entire game uh, and uh, make sure that everybody really had fun. I feel like the whole event 
good puzzle game is not to make somebody feel dumb and that they can't succeed, but that they did have that it was challenging, but they had the tools to complete the game. Which is why I would encourage you, if you're going to download the game, play it ahead of time, understand your own group that you're going to be playing it with, and then consider running it as a game master or appoint somebody who can do this for you if you want to be involved in the game. You can certainly print everything out uh, without ruining any of the puzzles for yourself. The clues are completely separated online from the pictures and that kind of stuff. Uh, so I would encourage you to have somebody who is a game master to run the game for you because uh, otherwise people stumble and people are using the internet and it's a little harder to control uh, who won, especially if you're going to be playing with more than one group. Um, otherwise, I like the game. This is the second of the games that we've played from Lock, Paper, Scissors. Uh, I learned some of the lessons about this game from the first game that we played. Uh, and uh, if you're looking to entertain groups of people, I think this is a good one. Thanks for watching.